In the first lecture, I introduced the basics of the Schrodinger formulation of quantum mechanics, including the key notion of a wave function. This is the most commonly used formulation of quantum theory, and we're going to use it throughout the course. We're going to discuss in great detail the interpretation of the wave function and properties of the Schrodinger equation. But today, I would like to give you an idea about an alternative formulation of quantum theory using so-called Feynman path integral, which in my opinion is a very beautiful formulation of quantum mechanics due to Feynman. Um, I should mention that this material is almost never taught, at least at the undergraduate level, and when it is taught, it's usually sent towards the end of the course. But today, I will experiment a little bit with this material and will introduce it right away. And one of the goals here is for me to tell you that what you read in uh, regular textbooks and actually here uh, in this course uh, is just one uh, way to think about quantum physics, the most commonly accepted way to describe quantum mechanics. But there are many other ways, actually. Some of them don't even include the notion of a wave function. And you should be aware of their existence, at least, and uh, keep an open mind here and actually in general whenever you study science. The derivation that I'm going to present uh, later in this segment uh, follows very closely this uh, paper uh, by Richard Feynman. Uh, uh, well, a part of the paper. The paper is much more detailed. Uh, written back in 1948. Um, and uh, this paper is a typical Feynman. So if you read uh, the abstract, uh, the first sentence of the abstract says, uh, non-relativistic quantum mechanics is formulated here in a different way. So he suggested a completely new um, uh, way to uh, think about things here. Now, um, I should mention that, uh, well, not as the date, 1948, so this time was actually a very difficult time for Feynman. So um, um, there is this book uh, which I um, would recommend uh, for you to take a look if you're interested in uh, Feynman um, as a person. Uh, perfectly reasonable, it's called Perfectly Reasonable Deviations uh, from the Beaten Track. So this book is real, there is no shortage of books about Feynman, but this book is uh, pretty much a, a collection of letters that Feynman wrote through, throughout his life. Uh, and uh, when, you read, uh, when you read this book, uh, uh, when you read these letters going back to this period, uh, to, the, to the 40s, you see uh, that it was a very, very painful time for Feynman because his wife Arlene uh, died at the, the school, school, uh, high school sweetheart whom he married, uh, died in uh, 1945, in June of 1945, uh, of tuberculosis. And he was, uh, it was a very, very, in, it was not easy for him uh, to uh, deal with this. So uh, the latter sort of buried this feeling very closely. And uh, despite this uh, difficult time and maybe uh, suffering and some sort of desperation, so he came came up with the uh, with a number of uh, very influential, very original, uh, very unusual ideas, and some of the, and one of those ideas is this path integral. Actually, in any case, going back to um, the actual um, physics, so I'm going to present the derivation, but uh, and as I mentioned, this derivation is rarely introduced in the very beginning of a quantum mechanics course, and one of the reasons here, of course is that technically it's actually quite involved. And uh, furthermore, the end result of this calculation is actually a new mathematical object that hadn't even existed before uh, Feynman uh, wrote it. And after he did, mathematicians have been arguing uh, to this day about its precise meaning. So there is some technical issue, there are some technical issues which exist. But uh, for those of you who are not really interested in these technicalities, again, I just would like to briefly tell you uh, the main ideas without going into um, into math. So let us consider a quantum particle uh, localized at the initial moment of time t equals zero in the vicinity of a certain point, initial point r sub i. And let's ask the question uh, of what is the probability uh, for this particle to reach a final point r sub f in a time t. So if it were a, qu a classical particle, it would have followed a unique, uh, well-defined classical trajectory. Let's say for a free particle, it would have been just a straight line connecting the two points. But in general, it would have been uh, a solution of the second Newton uh, equation or the Lagrange equations. But it would have been a unique uh, classical trajectory. So the main result uh, of uh, Feynman um, in, in this paper is that um, 
in quantum mechanics, the particle goes over all possible trajectories at the same time in some sense. So it follows the classical trajectory, you know, this trajectory, any trajectory you can imagine. And uh, there is a weight, a complex weight associated with uh, each trajectory, which is the exponential of i uh, times classical action divided by the Planck constant. So classical action here, uh, we're going to discuss it in more detail later, but just to remind you, the classical action uh, is uh, an integral from 0 to t uh, of the Lagrangian, which is the kinetic energy, basically mv squared over 2, minus the potential energy times dt. So this, uh, in, in classical physics, uh, the minimum of this action gives rise to Newton equations and to classical equations of motion. In quantum mechanics, there is no principle of uh, least action, as uh, Feynman showed, but uh, the, uh, all actions are, are allowed, and all of them give rise to um, um, some terms uh, in quantum theory. Now, going back to the probability of going from the initial point to the final point, in some sense, this probability can be represented as a sum over all, well, this, uh, the absolute value squared of a sum of all possible classical actions over all paths that I label here by an index L. Uh, and this sum itself is essentially symbolically represents what we're going to see as a path integral, which will come out of the theory naturally, and it's really uh, a very remarkable uh, result. Now, it turns out that, again, so the mathematical part of it is why it's subtle, but uh, one can actually solve some problems just by using this uh, sort of uh, cartoon picture of what a path integral is. And we're gonna, I'm going to give you an example of such a solution. So even if you don't follow uh, very closely and carefully the derivation of the uh, mathematical uh, formalism, uh, uh, you can still follow the uh, uh, main results, uh, uh, the main qualitative results later on 